Today we're going to be talking about decimals in expanded form and how to write them. Here's our standard for this unit with our learning scale, which brings us to our learning goal, where you can understand the relationships between fractions and decimals and easily compare and answer questions about the two. Let's start with a whole number just to review what expanded form is. When we're writing in expanded form, we are breaking apart our number based on the different place values. So if I have 625, we need to remember that I have a 6 in the hundreds place, a 2 in the tens place, and a 5 in the ones place. So when I break that apart in expanded form, when I expand it, I need to remember that my 6 is really representing 600 because it's in the hundreds place. My 2 is really representing 20 because I have two groups of 10, a 2 in the tens place. And I have a 5 in the ones place, which we know is 5. 5 groups of 1 is 5. When I have it written out like that, it's considered expanded form for 625. Now let's take a look at how to write decimals in expanded form. It's the exact same way you would do it with a whole number. We're just working on the other side of the decimal. When I have 24 hundredths, I'm going to break it apart in, in expanded form. And I'm going to start with the number closest to the decimal. I'm going to continue keeping, starting on the left and moving towards the right. If I have 24 hundredths, if I write that in expanded form, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the last one. We have to think about our 2 and what place value it's representing. That 2 is representing tenths, so it's going to stay right where it is. We're going to have our decimal, and we're going to have our 2. It's staying right there in the tenths place. When I look at my 4, I have to know that it's, in, that it's representing the thousandths place. To be in the thousandths place, you know that you are two digits to the right of the decimal. So I need to add a zero to hold that place value to make sure that I have my four in the thousands place and not in the tenths. So again, breaking down 24 hundredths in expanded form, you keep your two in the tenths place, you keep your four in the thousands place, and you use a zero as a placeholder when needed. Let's look at another one together. For this one, we have 319 thousandths. When I break this down into expanded form, just like working with whole numbers, you need to make sure they stay in their correct place values. We know that 3 tenths stays right next to the decimal. We know that when we're continuing on, we have to use the zero to hold our place value for when we're working in the thousandths. And, oh, I'm so sorry, for working, that was, that's hundredths. Our one is in the hundredths place. <laughs> this time, we have a number in the thousandths, however, so we would need two zeros as our place value holder. We have one zero to hold our place value for hundredths, two zeros to hold our place value for thousandths, so we have our number in the right spot. And then again, we don't need a zero for working with tenths because he is at the start right to the right of the decimal. Try and write 48 hundredths in expanded form and also 278 thousandths in expanded form. Do your best and we'll see you tomorrow.